What's going on party people? Kyle again here and today I want to touch very quickly on font face optimization. Now if you don't know what font face is you need to hit the Googles and you need to start using it immediately. But if you do know what it is and you use it every day in your life then this video is for you. This video is um, it's definitely going against convention. It's, uh, it's geared toward those of us that really, really like performance and, uh, you know, squeezing out every bit uh, as possible. So here we go. This is, on your screen, the typical font face syntax that you're used to. It, in fact, it's the bulletproof font face syntax. And what it's doing is it's serving up four different versions of the same font to support as many browsers as possible. And what I'm suggesting in this um, this workflow and this optimization technique that I'm going to show you is that you don't do that. In fact, I only serve up one file type, one type or, or one version of my font, and that's WAF. And the reason that I do that is because over on Can I Use, if I type in WAF, it tells me that it has 77% support. It's supported by all desktop, modern desktop browsers. Most of them back two versions, and the only version or the only browsers that don't support it are Opera Mini, Opera Mini, excuse me, and Android. And not to pick on you guys that have Androids and have the Opera Mini and all that stuff, I just don't care enough <laughs> about you <laughs> in order to serve up extra stuff to cater to you. So what I'm suggesting is we serve up one WAF that is ultra optimized and then we just have a nice font stack to support those browsers that don't support WAF. Um, a big website that you guys probably already know about is Font Squirrel. They have a web font generator and that's typically the tool that I use in order to um, achieve this uh, optimization. And in fact a ton of people use the web font generator and there's a lot of functionality in there that a lot of people don't know about. So let's let's dig in. I found this font. It's called Allegrea, I believe is how it's pronounced. And it's just a really nice serif. And let's go ahead and let's download the OTF. There's a web font kit, but remember, we're not using all those font files and serving up all the HTTP requests in the world. We're going to just use one file. And in fact, that one file, we're going to go ahead and we're going to base64 encode it. And uh, after we've optimized it, and just throw it in our CSS, so we have absolutely no extra HTTP requests, a super small um, file size, and then once you know, you should be gzipping. Once you do that, it gets rid of the around 33% bloat that's inherent to Base64 encoding. So we downloaded and unzipped Allegrea. Let's pull that up real quick, and let's go to the regular .otf. There we go. I think I've already got this on. Yep, there it is on my desktop. But you'll notice that the OTF is 48 kilobytes. We're going to reduce that by more than half, so stick around. Let's go to our web font generator here. So this is what you typically see when you go to the font, uh, font squirrel web font generator. You upload your font, and it's going to do some calculations, and it's going to show you how many glyphs you're using and how many uh, the font size. Um, you'll notice that this font has 503 glyphs, and that's pretty huge. A glyph is a character, if you didn't know. And what we can do is we can click Expert down here. And you can choose your font format. You can choose your subsettings, which actually gets rid of glyphs that you're not going to use. And you can choose whether or not to base64 encode. Yeah, there's a ton of a, a ton of functionality right here on the Font Squirrel uh, web font generator. So what I typically do is I click on WAF. I don't need any of these other file formats. And then, let's see. 
Uh, typically, basic subsetting is selected, and base64 encode is unselected. So what I do is I go to custom subsetting, and for us Western English speaking folks, all you're going to need is the basic Latin subsetting with the punctuation. So you'll notice that when you click it, it propagates down here and shows you what you're going to be serving up. So these are all the characters, more than likely, that you're going to need on any given font if you're uh, serving up a Western English site. And then we just go to uh, Base64 Encode, and that's going to spit out the CSS for you. Now typically it has a suffix of dash web font. I always delete that and I always remember my settings. That's why I've had to show you this stuff. But once you click all that and go through this rigmarole, you can go down here to download your kit and it's going to auto magically uh, set up this uh, web font to have only the sub settings that you want. It's going to um, optimize it if at all possible and since we clicked base64 encode it's going to go ahead like I said and give us that um, that data URI in our CSS file that it spits out. One thing that I will say is that it's a little slow it's doing a lot of computing and calculating on the back end there and that's fine because if you were to I don't know download font forge or something like that and then do this manually on your fonts it would take a lot longer and in fact, I've done it before, and it's just not worth it. So yeah, we've got our web, web font kit dot zip downloaded. Let's open that bad boy up, and let's look at it real quick. You will notice that it spits out a TTF, <coughs> excuse me, and a WAF. And you'll notice that this WAF is only 20 kilobytes. Remember that the OTF was 48 kilobytes. And it also spits out the CSS file, which we will open up here. And this is the syntax that it gives you, or the uh, markup that it gives you. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Allegria, and since I'm a stickler, I use the numerical font weight. And also I've noticed that you can kind of strip this stuff out. font dash waf and you strip out the car set. I, it's really... Not necessary. Meh. So there you go. Let's copy that. Let's go into our project here. And uh, let's paste that. So yeah. You can then go, boom, font family, Allegria, into your body. There we go. And as mentioned earlier, let's serve up a nice, a, a very fat um, font stack for this to support those browsers that don't support WAF. So what I did was I googled uh, Georgia font stack. And Chris Coyer, once again to the rescue, he's, he's thrown up a, a bunch of uh, font stacks for you. And let's just copy this one. There we go, and we can do a comma, boom. So that's going to serve up different fonts to those browsers that don't support WAF and Base64 encoded fonts and all that stuff. The ones we that are kind of secondhand that I don't really care about. The vast majority of the ones I do care about, they're going to support it, and boom, there you go. There's our Allegria font. No extra HTTP requests, 20 kilobytes, um, base64 encoded in the CSS. Once you gzip, it gets rid of that 33 odd percent bloat. And bada bing, bada boom, all your modern browsers are going to support it. So, yeah, that's what I'm suggesting that you cool people do. And I'm sure that I'm going to get a lot of feedback on this, so please hit me up. Uh, whether it's in the comments below or whether it's on social media, I want to hear your reactions to this. Um, and until next time, rock on.